Okay. I hope everybody can hear me here. I guess I should take this off, huh? And you can hear me better. Put this in here. I'm going to move this over here. Put this right here. He thinks it's still Christmas. I'm complete. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So hopefully, where everybody can hear on Facebook, and um, we are where at in the Bible? First John. First John. First John. So. We're actually in chapter 2. What's that? Chapter 2. Chapter 2. There's five chapters. First chapter is the shortest one. And uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for, for your love, Jesus, that you uh, demonstrated for us on the cross and uh, dying for us while we were still yet sinners. We were uh, your, your enemies, and you died for us, Lord. And uh, thank you for showing us what love is so we could demonstrate love and uh, know how to love you and love, love, love others, Father. We thank you. We thank you for the Word. We thank you for what we're learning in First John. And we pray for everyone who's uh, listening on Facebook in Guyana, um, and uh, we just praise you. We thank you now, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so does anybody remember like what we had talked about before, any kind of like highlights or anything like that of maybe some things that we had been discussing in the class? Does anybody... No, because we, we were talking, this is, okay, Stephanie. Um, so, um, the ju- well, you started talking about the judgment seat became the mercy seat. Oh, okay. Because that was the, um, uh, it says that he was the um, propitiation for our sins because the propitiation means the sacrifice that satisfies God's judgment. God, or God's, like God's, um, like when the, the mercy seat, it was the judgment seat because there was blood placed upon the lid of the, it was the, the, um, the, the, the Ark of the Covenant, the lid that went onto the Ark. There was blood that was put on it, and so it was the blood of the animals. And so it was placed upon it because the animals, it was like they were substituted. The sins of the people were placed upon the, the, uh, the animal, and the, animal, the animals were killed, and the blood was put on the mercy seat. And so there was mercy given. There was mercy. And so Jesus is the one, he was the sacrifice once for all, Hebrews 10.10. 10. He, he, he died for us once for all. So there's no more judgment for sin. Because Jesus said it is finished in John 19.30. It is finished. So there's no more, no more sacrifice for sin. Y'all still there? <laughs> Are, okay, because I, I dropped you. So don't do that again. Yeah, I, I, I hit it. There we go. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. So, and also, one thing that we're talking about, too, this is an interesting thing about John, okay? Because John had been with Jesus. John had been with Jesus, and he was taught by Jesus. And so, it was an interesting thing, because I was thinking of this, is that why did he wait so long to write, um, he wrote the um, Gospel of John, and he wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and he wrote the book, the, the book of Revelation. But why did he wait Because Matthew, Mark, and Luke were written. Because it was written really to a second generation Christians. 
wasn't it? Those who had not seen Jesus before, they had never seen him. They like, and so, and so that he says in the beginning, that which we have seen with our eyes, that which we have looked upon, that which, that which, that which, that which our hands have handled concerning the, the word of life, that which we have seen and heard, we de- declare we unto you. So that we saw it, we heard him, and we declare it unto you so that you may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. That's what it says in the beginning. That's why it was written, right? And so it was written, right, so that, that He says, I write these things unto you that your joy may be full. Then He talks about the light, there, that, 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 that God is light, 1 John 1, 5. God is light. And so if you see light, what is light? It is, it is like the... the the understanding of God. In other words, like, like, like God was not really understood, but Jesus revealed him. I mean, because it says in John 1.18, it says that no man has seen God at any time, but the only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. He has declared him. And the word there, the word there is um, uh, ex, ex hagiomai, and it's where we get the word exegesis. Like, in other words, he was the full description of God. So the light came into the world, but men love darkness rather than the light, is what it says, because it says this is the condemnation that light came into the world. That's why people, that's the only reason why people would be condemned, right? Because the light came into the world, but they said no to the light. They would love the darkness more than the light. You see, they love their darkness, but darkness, Satan blinds the minds of those that believe not. There's where the darkness comes. So sin is related somehow to somehow to unbelief. Sin and unbelief, they're, they're, they're very closely related together. They are linked somehow. But faith, on the other hand, which is the opposite, right? It's the opposite of unbelief. Like it's linked, it's linked, it's it's linked to love because faith works by love, right? And so in perfect love, what cast out fear? 1 John 4:18. Perfect love cast out fear, and then, and then, and then, uh, um, uh, love produces faith. That's an interesting thing. That was like the nation of Israel. Like their problem was why they didn't believe because they didn't believe that God loved them, and that's really the problem with most people in the world. I think is like they have this belief system that God does not love them. And if they were secure in God's love, then nothing would nothing would bother them. People would say things to them, and they're like, "Who cares? Like God loves me. I'm loved by God. It doesn't matter what anybody says or thinks about me or anything like that. I'm loved by God. I mean, what greater thing can there be than that? You know, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. You know that whosoever would believe on Him should not perish, but have but have that have eternal life. It's like, wow, we continue to believe in him. You know, we are born again. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. We are saved by the Spirit. You know, we are saved by Jesus, and then the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us, and the Holy Spirit reveals the thing, the things of Christ to us. That's an amazing thing, that God, he gave to us the Holy Spirit who lives in us, because without the Holy Spirit, we would not understand anything, anything at all from God. You know, that's in First Corinthians chapter 2. We wouldn't be able to understand any of this in here. We wouldn't be able to understand love. So this is an amazing thing. So, so love, so, so if somebody walks in love, they walk in the light too at the same time. You know, because God is love. In First John 4, 8, God is love. Because that's what Jesus said, that, you know, that they will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. That's how they know. That's how the world knows and sees it, is they see love. If they see love, then they see God. And then they have this understanding of God that they never maybe have ever understood before. So this is an amazing thing right here. So 1 John is loaded with this. This is like, this is how you can know that you're saved in 1 John, for sure. And it's also, it it teaches you to walk in the Spirit. It teaches you to walk in the light. It's kind of like we become born again, but then we have to grow. We begin to grow. We begin to hear the Word of God. Uh, and the Word of God is what changes us. We grow by hearing the Word of God, right? So, amen? So, let, let, let's start right here, and this, this is really good right here. So, 1 John 2, verse 7. 
It says, brethren. Now, this is what it says in King James. It says, brethren. But really, the word is um, agapatos. So it mean, it's really not brethren. It's not, it's not um, adelphos, which would be the word, the word um, for brother, but it's agapatos. So it's, it's actually should be translated um, beloved. Is that what your says? Beloved? That's better. Beloved. Because, in other words, those who were loved by God. In other words, this is written to Christians. This is written to born-again believers. Of course, we know that God loves all people, you know, and He loves the world. He loves the unsaved, and He died for the unsaved. We know that. But this is really talking, though, to Christians, beloved, those that know that they're loved, those who understand that they're loved. I mean, this is a, a big thing for us. You know, um, you know, I've talked to people before, like on the phone and stuff, and they're all like wound up and they're like mad at everybody. But really, it's because they would be the calm down if they and they would be secure if they understood that God loved them. Like what we said before, you know, it's like God, God loves us. So so um, uh, beloved. Now, this is really good. He says, I write no co- new commandment unto you, but an old commandment. OK which you have had from the beginning. This is what John is saying. I don't write a new commandment unto you. The word, the word for new is kainos in the Greek, kainos. Okay, and it means new in quality, new in quality. So there's two words for new in, in the Greek. There's kainos and there's neos. And neos, neos means uh, new in time, new in time. So if I was to buy a new car, but it really was a new car, it was a, if, if it was a used car, I would say, look at my new car. But it's not really a new car, it's a used car. Or pre-owned. But, or what? Pre-owned. A pre-owned, right? It's a pre-owned car, right? Pre-owned. We better say the right thing, not used. Right. Pre-owned, right? <laughs> it's a pre-owned car, but it's really, but I, but I like to say, you know what? It's new. It's my new car. But it's not really brand new. Brand new means it's brand new, and it's like and it's got the new car smell. It has, you know, I don't know if you can get one with zero miles or not. I mean, it may have like you know a few miles on it, may have like twenty miles. How was that? Just twenty. Twenty, you know, something like that. Somebody drove it. They did drive it, you know. Uh, they, they, they uh, but anyway. So this means new in quality. In other words, not something that's brand new, but actually it's old. And there's two words for old. There's uh, and the word the word that's used for old here is. Um, Paleos, a paleos, and paleos means old and worn out. It has seen service before, you know, and it is old and worn out. And it's time for a new one. Like I had an old phone, and it was not working very well. It was working a little bit. It was old and worn out, but it was time for a new one because it was it's worn out. I've used it. It's great. It's it's seen its time. It's perfect. Uh, and so, and there's the, not the word archaeos, that's another word for old, which is where we get the word ancient. Um, it's where we get the Greek word, the Greek word arche, which means um, b- b- beginning, like beginning, like ancient, like, like things that go way back. So he says, I don't write to you, it is not a new commandment that I'm writing unto you. And why, why is that? Because it was in the Old Testament. It was in Deuteronomy 6, 5, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind. And then it was in Leviticus 19, 18, to love your neighbor as yourself. Part of the Mosaic law was to love your neighbor as yourself. I mean, that's kind of an amazing thing. You know, it wasn't just eye for an eye and all this. No, it was love. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. It was commanded to love your neighbor as yourself. But what was the problem with the commandment? That it was what? Weak through the flesh in Romans 8.2. That was the problem with the commandment. Was my old sin nature prevented me from following the commandments. My old sin nature. So, and so, um, so he says right here, I, I, I do not write a new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard, and it says in the King James here, from the beginning, but your translation may not have from the beginning on the, on the last part right there. Because from the beginning is actually not, not in the original. Okay, 
Not that it really makes any difference, to be honest, because it doesn't really change the doctrine or what is teaching here or anything. But King James has a tendency to add on a little bit more. It, it adds on because it was taken from the um, uh, Texas Receptus, which is a different family of Greek. But the older uh, manuscripts, okay, they were found uh, like in the 1800s, 18-something. I don't know what it was, but it was way before because, because these manuscripts came like from the 1500s or something like that, the um, Texas Receptus. So they're not as old as the more reliable ones, okay? And the reason why we say that is because the older ones, you would think, wouldn't have mistakes, but... But there were mistakes that were made in the Greek. And so there were a lot of things that were like, and you'll notice the King James Bible has more words in it. It has more words in it. So just a little side note. But anyway, yours does? Oh, okay. Does it say it at the end? Or does it say it in the middle? In the middle. Okay, it doesn't say it at the end though, right? Mine said it at the end. Do you have a King James? Okay, so King James. So in King James, it's said twice, but in yours, it only says it once in there. It only says it once, yeah. Cause so, so the last part from the beginning. And like I said before, I mean, I was debating whether even to bring it up or not, because it doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. It doesn't change what's being taught here or anything like that. So most of the Bible, even though that there was add, things added on and things like that, it doesn't really change. It's the, the, what is taught there is not changed. It's the same thing that's in there. It's just that there was just there were things that were added on and there were things that were different because they wrote by hand and because they wrote by hand, there was mistakes made and things like that. And so it's just something to keep to make a note of. But anyway, but then he says here in verse eight, he says again, um, the the Greek the Greek word the Greek word is palin. Palin. It says, again, a new commandment I write unto you. Is he trying to confuse us or something here? He says, like, I, I don't write to you a new commandment, but an old commandment. Then he says, again, a new commandment I say unto you. Now he's like, and so I was like, like what, what is he like? Is he trying to confuse us here? Because he just said it was an old commandment. Now he's saying it's a new commandment. He says, he says so let's, let's go to, keep your finger there, and let's go to John 13. Keep your finger there. And I want to show you something here, that the words that John was saying here, a new commandment I write unto you. You know where he learned that from? He learned that from Jesus. He learned it from Jesus. He learned it. He heard Jesus preaching. He heard Jesus talking. And this was written to what? Second generation Christians. Those who had never seen him before. They had never seen him. And if you read through 1 John, you'll find many, many times in there that John has said things that Jesus said. The things that Jesus said, John wrote it down because John was, was, was an apostle. And an apostle, the requirement to be an apostle is they had to have been seen Jesus, been taught by Jesus, and been sent out by Jesus. And so that's why there's no more modern day apostles anymore because they, there's nobody alive on the earth that's seen Jesus and was taught by him and was commissioned by him. Now, we were commissioned by him in a way. We were sent out. But we're not apostles. We're no, there's no more apostles. Does everybody understand this? The Greek, the Greek, the Greek word for apostle is is um, um, apostelos, and it means to send out, to send out. You know, and Jesus sent them out. He sent them out in Matthew 28. You know, he says, "Go into all the world uh, and preach the gospel." You know, go into all the world. So anyway, so in John 13 here, what this is Jesus saying this right? Uh, in verse 34, okay, he says, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another. And, and listen to this. As I have loved you, so that you also love one another. Now, this is an interesting thing here. Jesus said this. says, A new commandment I give, I give you. The word for that there, the Greek word, the Greek word is aina. Okay, I-N-A. And it means... In order that, so that, it means so that, you know, in order that. And then it says that you, and I, I like to translate it this way, so that you may love one another because the word love there is in subjunctive mood. Subjunctive mood is the mood, the mood, the mood of uncertainty. It's the opposite of the, the uh, indicative mood. The indicative mood is the mood of fact. But subjunctive mood is uncertain. In other words, you may not love one another. 
Maybe you will and maybe you won't. It's conditional. It's conditional that you love one another. What's the condition? What's the condition here? That you love as I have loved you. The word for as, the Greek word is kathos, K-A-T-H-O-S. And it means just as, just as, in exactly the same way. In other words, that's Jesus came and re, and th- it was commanded, the old commandment was given, but it was never shown how to love one another. It was just commanded to love one another because it was the law. It was the Mosaic law. It was the commandments. But Jesus came and demonstrated to us how to love one another. And how do we love one another? That Because as I have loved you. And how did Jesus love us? You know, he loved us by, um, um, Sharon, can, can you put yourself on mute? Someone is not on mute. So, um, so anyway, so where are we at? So in the same way, so in Romans chapter five, verse eight, it says, Jesus loved us while we were yet sinners, while we were his enemies. The Bible says, while in Romans 5.10, while we were dead in sins in Ephesians 2.1, like that was the demonstration of Christ's love. Like the Bible says um, that no greater love has any man than this, that a man lays down his life for his friends. That's what Jesus said. I think I might have to turn the volume down on this here. Just one second here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so, okay, so, sorry about that. So anyway, I just want to have distractions here. So anyway, so um, so Jesus, all right, he came and demonstrated his love for us. He demonstrated it and, it, and it was shown to us, this is how you love one another. That's why Jesus' teaching, his teaching in Luke chapter 6 and in Matthew chapter 5 was to love your enemies. Love your enemies. No, the Bible says the commandment was to Love your neighbor, love your neighbor, not to love your enemies, to love your neighbor. But that's the new commandment. The new commandment comes and it's like, and, and it's in what it does, it brings us into a new realm, into a new understanding, into a new ability. We never had this ability before to love one another. It was just commanded. It was commanded to us. Everybody follow me? Yeah, you're not following? Okay, so uh, so in other words, what we're seeing is is that Jesus came and demonstrated His love for us, right? In that while what number one, I was yet a sinner, I was dead in my sins in Ephesians two one, I was His enemy. As a matter of fact, in Romans five ten, I was His enemy, but so Jesus still loved me and died for my sins, but and I and and I never really understood that love. Because the greatest that a man can love is that he will die for his friend, but he will never die for his enemy. And Jesus came and died for his enemies. And that's why Jesus came and he taught and he said to us, his teaching was to love your enemies, to do good to those who despitefully use you. It's like, wow, this is a new way of thinking. This is a new thought. Um, And so... He says, to love one another just as in the same way that I have loved you, in the exact same way that and that and that you should love one another. Well, this is spiritual. This is spiritually thinking. This is spiritual thoughts. You know? And then it says right here in verse 35. What does it say here? It says that by this all men, all men know, shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have love one to another. Wow. This is the light. This is the light that's revealed to everyone in the world so that people can see the love of God without words being spoken. You know, necessarily, it could be words being spoken, but it's love being demonstrated. Okay? So let's turn back here. So does everybody see that? That's where John learned that from. He learned it straight from the horse's mouth. You know, and you can, you will see that a lot in here. He got it straight from the horse's mouth. He got it straight from Jesus. Like the things that he wrote in here, he learned it because he had been sitting there listening to Jesus preaching and he leaned upon his breasts and he was the disciple whom Jesus loved. That was his viewpoint about himself. 
the disciple whom Jesus loved. Well, that should be our own viewpoint of ourselves. You know, I am the one who Jesus loves. Okay, and then, okay, so where are we at here? In verse 8, right? 1 John chapter 2, verse 8, it says, Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true. And where is it true at? What, is it, what does it true mean? True means it's not deviated. It doesn't go from the left or to the right. It doesn't cause deception. It doesn't, it brings us to the light of understanding of, of his love for us. It says, which thing is true? Where is it true at? It's true in him and in you. Which thing is true in him and in you? It was found in him, it was discovered in him, and then it was proven in you. It was proven in you because Jesus is not here now. And now we have the Spirit here. He ascended into heaven. The Holy Spirit came. And so now we are the body of Christ. And we are members in particular in the body. And so now that's what the church is. And now the world, the church is to reveal Christ to the world. That's the purpose of the church. I think sometimes they, people have like the wrong idea like what the church is. It's like this uh, uh, charity organization, right? It's a charity organization. No, that's not what it is. I mean, that could be part of what a church does, maybe. But the main focus of the church is to reveal Christ to the lost world. And for it to be a place where we can come, where there is the love, a fellowship of love together that brings us light, and it's where the Spirit of God dwells, is here in the church. That's what it says in Ephesians 2.22. The Spirit dwells in the church. And how does He dwell in the church? When we love one another and we have the same faith and the same, that we speak about the same things, we're taught the same things, and we fellowship about the same things. How could the Spirit of God not be there? You know, He is here. He is here. Um, and so... Um, he says, again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him, and it's proven in you. It's proven in you. What does this mean? It's like it's tested and approved. In other words, like people see you. They see your faith. You become epistles known and read of all men in 2 Corinthians 3, 2. I mean, that's an amazing thing. And then it says, uh, because the darkness is past. Now, the King James says, because the darkness is past. But it's actually a present tense verb. It's not a past tense verb, like it says here. It, like, the dark, the, like the darkness is the way it's worded here. It should say it's a present tense. It, say, it should say it's passing away. Is that what yours says? Did somebody say that? Yeah. The, 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 the darkness is passing away because it's a present passive indicative. I'm getting a little complicated here, but that's what we do. Yeah, yeah that's... That, that's the better translation. The better, the darkness is passing away. Okay. Because it's present tense, which means it's continuous action. It's um, passive voice, which means that the subject receives, the subject receives the action. Okay. It's passive. Um, because God is, because the light is the one that's driving the light out. Or the light is what's driving the darkness out rather. Okay, so light is driving the darkness out. So, um, <clears throat> and so uh, it's, it's um, okay, so it says that the darkness is passing away. And what Kenneth Wee says, it's like you're watching this um, uh, parade and the parade's going by, right? But there's going to be, a, it's passing by you, and but there's going to be an end to it. You know there's going to be an end. There's an end. There's an end to darkness. There's going to be an end to it. There's going to be an end to it in our lives. And so, and so perfect love, when it is complete, it, in our own personal lives, it casts out fear. You know, when light is complete, like there is no more darkness left. The two cannot exist together. You see, it doesn't mean that we don't have areas maybe of darkness in our, in our lives, because maybe we do, but the light comes in and shines in, and when the light comes, like all of the room is lit up because of light, and there's no dark places left, because light comes in, and, and because I cannot be in the flesh and in the spirit at the same time. See, it's not possible to be. You know, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, right? Galatians 5.16 right? In Romans chapter 8, verses 4, 
It says, walk in the spirit. You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So we, we walk in it and it's like, and so I cannot be carnal and spiritual at the same time, but it can get like kind of turned off and on sometimes, can it? I can be like in the flesh in one moment and then spiritually be spiritual. Well, they're, they're like the next, the next minute, you know, or I can be spiritual one minute, all of a sudden, boom, something happens. Whoa. You know, it's like, and, that, and that's it. You know, that can be, but the two can't exist together at the same time. So, and that's it. So light comes in and it's what, it is what? It says, because the light is passing away. I said, because the light, the darkness passed away. You better listen to what I'm saying here, right? Because I might be saying the wrong thing. Because the darkness is passing away, you know, <laughs> and the true light, it's, the Greek says, shines already. Does yours say that, shine already? Yeah. I'm just wondering. Shine. It shines already. It is really already. It mine says now shines. It's okay. It says the true light. The the true light. Yeah, I like shines already. That's yeah. Already is the is the key word there. But it says now. Mine says now, which is okay. It's just, you know it, it's the same. But so it's so um, the true light. It now shines. Okay, so because it's true and not false. It's the true light. I mean, think about that. Like true light, it says it over and over and over again in the Bible about it being true. You know, it's like I true, it's called truing a bicycle wheel. That is a truing stand I have out there. Do you see it out there? It's a little thing that comes up. It's called a truing stand. It's really what it's called. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's called a truing stand. And you put the wheel in it. And what you do is the hub has to be exactly center in there. And it has to be round. And it can't be like you know, like pushed in like that. It has to be completely round and, and it can't be like deviated like this. It means it's straight and true. And so when you're riding it, if the hub was off center anyway, you may not realize it, would you? Because your wheel would be off track and it would mess you up maybe when you're riding and it would be deceptive. You see, it would be deceptive in a way, right? Mm -hmm. But what's that? You might fall. You might fall. And you may not realize why you did. You know, it's just like, why did I fall off the bike? It's like, why? Because I hit the rock a certain way and I, like, I fell. You know, but it's like, I, I didn't before. But it's because the wheel wasn't, wasn't centered correctly on there. And so, and that's what it means. Like, it, like God's word, the word of God, it leads us in truth. It leads us into life. It leads us into righteousness. Like experientially, you know, we are positionally, we are righteous. Because of the blood of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 He became sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. We are made righteous, not because we do righteous things. But God is the one who does it, who works in us. Philippians 2.13 It's God who works in you, both to will and to do of, of His good pleasure. What does that mean? It's like, as I draw near to Him, like He does the work in my heart. When I give him my heart, then he gives me his heart, Ezekiel 36, 26. I mean, as, as we draw near to him, as we study his word and we learn about his love, that's why, like I tell people all the time, it's like, like I've, I've, I talk to people uh, who we've met, you know, and it's like, and they have troubles and things in their lives. And it's like, what you need to hear, my counsel to you, is to come and hear the word of God. I mean, as simple as that. Come and hear the word of God. Because it's God's counsel. I can tell you to do this and do that and do this, but it's like really what we need to hear is God's life. That way, like all of my thoughts of fear and worry and insecurity and things like that, they can just be pushed out because of love, because they can't exist together. They can't exist together, you know? And so, and, and that's it. Um, and so, maybe we can call it good. What do you think? We only did two verses. That was good. It was good. So let, let's pray. So, so, Father, we thank you so much for your mercy, your love for us, Lord Jesus. We thank you for coming to us and demonstrating love and teaching us love. We pray that we are a church where we love one another and we don't hold grudges toward one another and have expectations of one another about things, Lord, that we we have a special kind of love and we're built up, Father, in faith and in love. Uh, we, we thank you so much, Father. And we just want to pray 
right now. If there's anyone out there who has never received Jesus before, this is your opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Savior. It's a free gift. The Bible says you're saved by grace through faith. It's not of yourself. It's the gift of God. It's not by works. It's a free gift. Going to heaven's by a free gift. I mean, this is an amazing thing. It's, where it's a free because Jesus paid our way to go to heaven. He paid the penalty of our sins. So we accept the gift from him. You know, like if I was going to offer you $1 million and it was in my hand right there, which I don't have $1 million, but if I was going to give you a $1 million and it was in my hand, how would you get it out of my hand? You would have to reach your hand out and take it. And you would have to accept it. And that's why Jesus, he offers freely eternal life. So just say a simple prayer. Just say, just say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Give me the free gift of eternal life. I want to go to heaven when I die. Come in my heart and save me and give me this gift. Give me this gift. And if you've said that prayer, the Bible says the angels in heaven are rejoicing because you accepted him. You are born again, born again. All the old things have passed away. All things are new. You are secure in your salvation. Jesus paid for all your sins. You are, you are a new creation. And if you know, feel free to send me an instant message on Facebook if you want, or give me a call, 727-452-7445 is my personal phone number. And you can also check out our website where we have archived uh, messages on there. It's greatergrace.church, greatergrace.church, really easy, www.greatergrace.church. So, amen.